Welcome to episode three of When Life Gives You Lemons, Go Vegan. This is a podcast that seeks to celebrate and share people's incredible stories of recovery as a result of them adopting a low-fat, whole food, vegan lifestyle. I'm your host, Corinne Nidja, and I myself am one of these stories. I was definitely given some lemons in 2004 when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. At the time, I was obese, living with chronic pain from fibromyalgia, and my symptoms progressively worsened until I went numb from the waist down in 2008. This was my breaking point, and I decided then to commit to adopting a low-fat, whole-food, plant-based diet and watch as my entire life transformed before my eyes. I am now incredibly passionate about supporting other people to adopt a low-fat, whole-food, plant-based lifestyle and see for themselves that food truly can be medicine. In 2004, there was no hope left for me. The aim of this podcast is to spread a new message of hope to those that might think that there is none, because there is. This week's episode is with Mark and Kim from Chickpea and Bean. Mark overcame a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes when he discovered a low-fat, whole-food, plant-based diet, which then saw him make a full recovery, go medication-free, and feel better than he has ever in his life. We'll hear Mark and Kim tell their story and also talk to them about how they made the change and their journey along the way to a better life. I hope you enjoy episode three. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're, we're excited to talk to you. Really, really excited, Corinne. Thank you so much for the opportunity for all you're doing. And just awesome to see the successes that you've had since adopting this way of uh, living. You know, so fantastic. I've had so many stories. So I'm really excited to listen to your both of yours again with clean mind. So thank you so much for uh, making the time to talk to me because this book is so well, it's just really important to me. You know, we all have those people in our lives who are really unwell and you know we tell them you should try a plant-based diet and they go, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. Just because you had a plant-based diet work for you doesn't mean that's going to work for me. And so I just think if it's a whole book with people like yourselves and a collection of people, then more people will listen than just right. one person saying it. And hopefully then they'll make some changes. Right. Yeah. yeah. You never know that like one little piece yeah. might be something that somebody relates to yeah. and that sets them on the right path. Yeah. yeah for, me, for many people, I think it's like you said, it's triggers. You know, something has to happen. Because most people, if they're healthy and they're, they don't, they don't have any chronic disease that is defined. The doctor didn't tell them you're diabetic. Or many people are like, "Hey, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm doing great." And in reality, there's so much we can do to help prevent ever getting to those places where we have diabetes or high blood pressure, cholesterol, etc. So there's a lot we can do about it. So thank you for trying to get that word out. And that's quite honestly, that's what we're trying to do too. When we started down this path seeing all the devastation and destruction that had happened from a health perspective to our to my family and even to Kim's. Mm. And you sit here and you, you, you seem to have found an answer. Now you want to share it with everybody, right? Oh, and so uh, so that's what we're trying to do. Same same as you, Corinne. So so thank you so much for what you're doing. Well thank you. I think the more people who are spreading this message, however it is, the better, you know, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. You know, what's interesting is my uh, my niece has a fiancé who I think is battling MS right now. Mm. And, you know, I, I've sent him, uh, sent them through my older sister, because I talk to them, but not that much. I'm waste, I mostly talk to my older sister, and it's her daughter. Mm. So I sent them information, you know, Nutrition Facts has some information, Dr. Gregor, mm, yeah. he has some information on MS, and then John McDougall, and Roy Swank. I mean, there's some information back there mm. that, that can help them. And so I shot them all that information. But I thought how cool in your story, too, and, and everything that uh, you've been through mm. uh, as as a testimony that, hey, you know, it can help uh, the, the condition quite a bit. I mean, are you in are you in remission? Do you, do you, are they do they still consider you to have MS? Is it still a battle today? Or well, it's difficult because I stopped going to my neurologist in which I, put, I wouldn't recommend to everyone. But for, right. but for me, I stopped going to my neurologist in two thousand and eight, and I haven't had a relapse since two thousand and eight. And wow. that that was when I committed to this properly. 
Now I run five, six kilometers a day. I work out at the gym. Wow. Before I was, I think you read there, I was really, really sick and unhealthy. I'm having relapses about once a year. And the last one I went numb from the waist down. And I was still smoking and th- things that were vegan. I was still drinking energy drinks because, like, they're vegan, but it's horrible right. for you, you know. Right, and just right. junk food and smoking and then I went numb from the waist down and I woke immediately as soon as you wake up and you can't feel your legs or you think you know what maybe I shouldn't smoke (laughs) maybe I everyone said it was bad and they were right (laughs) yeah Uh, that's good yeah yeah. that must have been very scary yeah but the neurologists I went to neurologists for years it was really scary really scary I'm one of those people that smiles even when really horrible things are happening. It's just my face can't look sad. <laughs> but, I... <laughs> but the neurologist, I went to him. I saw, I read the swank information. I don't ever want to go back. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, that's fantastic. And, you know, I, I don't know who may, you may have shared. You know, you shared your story with us in this letter. But uh, maybe at some point, I mean, we would love to share your story under our success stories on our website. Absolutely. We would love for you yeah. to tell that story. Absolutely. Because the more people can hear all these different, you know, you hear about lupus, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and all of these crazy things that simply fixing the food can literally turn that around. You know, in many cases halt it, and in a lot of cases reverse it. We need to keep spreading that word. So Absolutely. we'd love for you to anyway. share your story as well. So I just thought we'd just get into your story. If you can go all the way back when you're at your very worst in your health so that we can get the listeners and the readers can really get a picture of your lowest time. So my name is Mark Ramirez. I'm a chickpea and bean. I'm here with my wife, uh, Kim. I'm, I'm Mexican. I am bean, and she is chickpea. Uh, and we make chickpea and bean. And basically, Corinne, our story, your, kind of our health journey starts with, for the most part, my side of the family. I come from a big Mexican family, eight brothers and sisters. And when you look at my family, my mother, unfortunately, she dealt with diabetes for over 33 years. She had a heart attack. She had a kidney transplant. She was legally blind. She had uh, years and years of dialysis, years and years of horrible health, unfortunately. Ultimately, she needed a double bypass at the age of 61, which she never recovered from. So she ended up passing at the young age of 61 years old. You then look at my oldest brother, David. David died at the young age of 41 after a nine-month bout with pancreatic cancer. David was also diabetic for approximately 10 years, you know, multiple medications for diabetes. And I believe he has some heart, uh, blood pressure and cholesterol issues as well. Next is my little brother, the youngest of the family, Martin. Now, Martin is 44 years old right now, this year. Martin was diagnosed with diabetes at the young age of 13 or 14 years old. He's been diabetic 31 years. He's had two amputations. First, they took his four toes on his right foot. Then his circulation was so poor in the foot that they had to take the leg just below the knee. He's had a pancreas and kidney transplant. He's legally blind. He's had a heart attack. He takes 25 medications every single day. And just in May of this year, a few months back, they took out half of his thyroid because they they found three lumps that they believed to be cancerous. So they wanted to take it out. So he's in very, very poor health, unfortunately. Next, you have my little sister, Sandra. Sandra is just one year, a year and a half younger than than me. She's been diabetic for 14 years. She has uh, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, multiple medications, a couple of injection, insulin injection shots uh, every day, and unfortunately in poor health. Uh, my, my one sister, Jill, she is the only sister who, of, of all my brothers and sisters who has not battled diabetes. Now, because of that, she's the lucky one that was able to donate the kidney to my mother. So no diabetes, but still impacted by the disease. My oldest sister, Carol, Carol was diabetic for about five years. Ultimately, uh, she was taking metformin for her diabetes. She saw what Kim and I were doing and decided to change her diet. 
And in a matter of months, she was able to eliminate her, her metformin medications. And then next, you'd have my twin brother, Joe. Joe and I were both 49 years old right now. We'll be 50 in a few months in January. And uh, Joe has been diabetic for 16 years. He's uh, had a heart attack, has high blood pressure, high cholesterol, multiple medications, and not in, in great shape. I myself, I was diagnosed with diabetes in 2002. I dealt with diabetes for 10 years for a decade. And I started with, you know, metformin, start with the pills, 500 milligrams. And then as the years go on, the dosages go up and the medications start to accumulate. So when you look at this 10-year period of me being sick, I was diabetic, uh, taking insulin shots and then two oral medications for diabetes. In that decade, I'd also um, been diagnosed with high blood pressure. So I'm taking lisinopril for that. Then uh, it was high cholesterol yet another medication. So now I'm 43 years old. I'm taking five different medications, including insulin shots. And on top of these three conditions, I also in that decade had developed erectile dysfunction and had psoriasis all over my scalp. I had heartburn very, very frequently, three or four times a week that that would flare up. And uh, I was overweight, 50 pounds overweight, and I didn't sleep very well. So at 43 years old, I was just really a mess from a, medically speaking. One of the darkest moments of me coming to this realization was it had been about four or five months that my brother had his right leg amputated. Maybe this was in 2011. My wife and I are in the living room and we're just, you know, out, we're sitting here staring at amputations, at heart attacks, at blindness, at transplants as our future. And I'm a big guy. I'm, you know, I, I had the fortunate opportunity to play football at the University of Michigan. I was 305 pounds as a right guard when I played with one of the big offensive linemen up front. My wife is 5'4 and 130 pounds. 100, oops, I'm sorry. I told him how much he weighed. <laughs> I hope you're not mad at me. Don't hit me. <laughs> but she's, she's a small individual. How is she going to take care of me? And we're looking at this and staring at this saying, this is my future. When you look at my family, one would look at that and say, well, it's genetic. He's Mexican. You know, Hispanics have a high rate of diabetes. And I just thought this was part of my future. My whole family was sick. I thought that there was nothing I could do about this. So I'm sitting here staring at amputations, blindness, transplants, and I'm thinking of all this devastation throughout my family. And now I have two children, two children that are getting older, and I'm wondering what, what weddings am I going to miss? You know, are they going to have to come see me in the hospital or in the nursing home because my, my health had deteriorated so bad? And I didn't want amputations and all this devastation that had come with being sick. At that point, my in-laws... Kim's parents ended up giving Kim and I a, uh, a documentary, and that documentary was Forks Over Knives. Now, when they first gave it to us, it sat on the shelf for a few months. Uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't jump to look at the movie, right? They're like, "Hey, you be, we know you're sick. Here's a movie. This might help." Well, I, you know, I didn't jump to say, "Oh yeah, I need to do that." Uh, so it sat on the shelf for a little bit. We finally, after sitting here being somewhat depressed about looking at my future, my family's future, and, and my health. We decided to watch the, the, the documentary, Forks Over Knives. So we saw the documentary. That led us to Dr. Neil Barnard, who, um, you know, PCRM, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. We read Dr. Neil Barnard's program for reversing diabetes, and we said, okay, let's do this. In my decade of being sick, I had tried to count carbs, count calories, portion control, exercise more, eat less, all these different tactics you hear about and see. Uh, many people trying and attempting. And while I might have lost a little weight or felt a little better trying some of these tactics, I was still sick. I was still taking the medication. So it wasn't until we adopt this whole foods, plant-based lifestyle that everything really literally just changed the trajectory of my family's future from a health perspective. We start this lifestyle and I'm sick for 10 years. In two months, I'm off all five of those medications. In three months, I lost 50 pounds. That was, um, so we started the lifestyle December 30, 2011. By January 30, 2012, no more medications. By the end of uh, February, lost 50 pounds. That was over five and a half years ago. And today, to this day, I'm still medication-free. The 50 pounds have remained off my frame, and I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. So now Kim and I just try to do everything we can to share the power of food and let people know what can happen if you really just give your body a chance to heal itself and feed it the right foods. Thank you so much. It's an incredible story. 
Your and whole family. Yeah, I, like, is it, if, how many siblings do you have? My mother and father had eight children. They, my mom and dad were divorced. At, I think I was seven years old when they divorced. So it was really just my mom, who was the rock of the family, wow. left to raise all the children. My dad left and I never really heard from him again. Mm. So my mom was the rock of the family helping us all. So uh, it was really a devastating year in 2002 when my mother passed. That was the same year that my brother, so my brother's battling cancer and my mom dies and my brother dies two, almost two months to the day uh, after my mother passed. So 2002 is one of the worst years of my life. Could it be so hard, especially when she's the, yeah, the rock of your family, as you say. Yeah, she definitely, you know, held the family together, was the glue, right? And, and uh, it was really a blow to, to our family to have her go, and especially at such a young age. I mean, my daughter was, I think, nine, and my son was six. We live in the Detroit area. They live in, all my family reside in the Chicago land area, which is about a five-hour drive, so it's not too far. But, you know, we don't get there as much as we'd like to. So they didn't get to see grandma very much, and, and then she passed. My daughter is engaged. She'll be married next year. My mom won't be there. I mean, so you think about all these things that will be missed, and really, when you look back to uh, the disease, it's it's really heartbreaking to know that you know they're not going to know my my mother, right? My their grandparents on that side. Mm. So it's a. Uh, and this is why, this is why it's so important for you. So thank you for what you're doing to get the message out. And Kim and I are trying to do the same because I think if all of us would look back and, and see what happens and what to many, many families and it's happening today, hopefully they will try to look at this and say, I need to do something different because the path I'm on now uh, is not working. Did you buy them flowers and a, <laughs> a gift to tell them thank you for sending me that DVD? You know, we had the we had the fortunate uh, opportunity of meeting Brian Wendell back in March of this year. We we, we uh, Kim and I were out there at a conference for uh, Two Forks, which is a combination of Forks Over Knives and Rip Esselstyn's uh, The Engine Two. Ah. So they 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 do events together, and they asked us to go and speak at their conference as a testimonial. And we had the, the great chance of meeting you know Brian Wendell, who, you know, uh, with Forks Over Knives and. And we we did tell him, hey, you know, thank you for making that movie because that did definitely trans, you know, move us to the right direction in, in fixing our health. So, how did you find those first three months? How did you find? Or what was your diet like before going plant based? Like, what were you eating before you went plant based? So it was a terrible diet. Uh, fast food junkie, uh, Corinna. I, I used to go through the drive throughs McDonald's, Burger King, White Castle, all the, and have breakfast sandwiches. Many times I'd go for lunch, sometimes for dinner. It just depended. But I was a fast food junkie, just eating all the wrong foods. I'd eat a little bit of veggies here and there, a salad here and there, but mostly my diet centered around, which I think most Americans do, is, you know, heavy on the animal protein side and not nearly enough on the whole foods. And so what does your diet look like now? What would be a day in the life of your eating? My breakfast, almost always, my staple is oatmeal. And why? Because it's so versatile. I can do so many different things. I can put bananas in it, strawberries, blueberries, walnuts, pecans, almonds, uh, just a huge variety, chia seeds, flax seeds, a little bit of almond milk, or maybe just heat it up with water. You can uh, do that. So for breakfast, a lot of times it's uh, oatmeal in some fashion and usually a wide variety. For lunch, we do some little um, sandwiches, veggie sandwiches. Sometimes I'll just make a, a piece of toast, throw some hummus on top with some sliced tomatoes or avocados, maybe a little bit of balsamic vinegar on top. For dinner, you know, you can have a spaghetti, you can have veggie fajitas, you can have burritos, bean burritos. I mean, just a huge variety. Uh, of course, always trying to sprinkle in all the greens, the salads, the spinach, the kale. A lot of the fruits and vegetables uh, for snacks, uh, you know, apples, uh, bananas, oranges, kiwi, uh, just a huge variety. But we try to tell people, you know, try to we try to eat the rainbow, all the different colors, all the different varieties of fruits, you know, four food groups, which are the vegetables, the fruits, the grains, and the legumes or the beef. That Those are the four that we focus on. We try to flood our bodies with those foods every single day. It's so good to hear. It sounds delicious. People think that plant-based diets are kale and maybe <laughs> some more kale. So it's really nice for them to hear people like this part of the interview I really enjoy because it shows the diversity of this diet to people who might think 
so restrictive and so hard. But, you know, you're saying you have spaghetti, you have fajitas, you have toast. Right, yeah. You can have so many different things. Yes, um, we um, love food. Um, we, while we're eating, we talk about what are we going to have for our next meal. <laughs> you know, we're, we're really into food. So. And I'm really lucky, Corinna. I, I have to say, you know, I, I have kind of this dramatic story with all the chronic illness, right, mm. and, and how we reversed it all. Mm. It all went away. Kim, obviously, my better half, uh, she's the one who really makes the majority of the food. Mm. And she's always trying different things out. Uh, lentil loaf. I mean, if you look at our website, there's a bunch of recipes that she has there. Uh, but really, I, I owe a lot to her because she keeps the food coming and diff- trying different things, making new uh, recipes. So um, I really owe a lot to Kim in helping us down this path. Oh, you're a lucky man. And, <laughs> I am very lucky. And, and, you know, the other thing that I you know, I should have mentioned, you know, all my chronic illness and all that. However, when you look at Kim's story, we did this together as a team on January or December 3rd of 2011. We adopt this lifestyle together. And I have the reversing of all the chronic illness. But Kim, Kim was not sick. No chronic conditions to speak of. But guess what? She lost weight. Complexion got better. Hair got thicker. And really, I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be talking about. I'll let you talk about uh-huh. your experience. Yeah, like Mark said, I didn't have any chronic diseases. I uh, was blessed that way. But I did. I had a mole on my chest that was supposed to be biopsy because it looked suspicious. And about three months after eating this way, it disappeared and hasn't come back. So that that was a wonderful surprise. I don't have a scar now. And I did. it took me about a year to lose 10 pounds, but I, I wasn't too overweight to begin with. Um, so my, my changes weren't as dramatic also because... I think that I ate more healthfully than Mark did. I didn't eat much meat to begin with. I used to be a vegetarian when I was in my late teens and early 20s, and I did that for ethical reasons. And then I got off track. I thought that you needed to eat meat to be healthy. And when we had our children, I thought it was sort of a necessary evil and that I needed to give them that. I got off track and just start eating meat again, but I never liked it very much. I didn't eat too much of it, maybe just a couple times a week. So I already ate a lot of fruits and vegetables. So my my changes weren't as dramatic as Mark's. Um, but I still am reaping the benefits. And um, a huge benefit that I experienced because of the changes we made together is emotionally and psychologically. When we discovered that Mark's sugars were coming down, that his glucose levels were getting lower, and that he could start cutting back on his medications for type 2 diabetes, it was like a whole new world open to us. You know, I felt empowered. I felt liberated. I felt like we had a, a future again. And so to me, that was the, the huge gift in all of this is, mm-hmm. is the future we can look forward to now and that we can share with our children and other people, our friends and family. I imagine just when you were talking about your mark, like the lowest moment when you were sitting there with images of amputations and heart disease and diabetes in your head, it's hard for you, but it must be really difficult as as a as the partner watching, feeling so helpless and powerless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was hard, and we actually didn't talk about it too often. But from time to time, we would mention it, and we were very concerned about the future and what it held for us. And I was worried about how I would take care of him if he had an amputation like his brother did. And I was wondering, you know, who's who would be a good kidney match for him? Because um, usually you go to your brothers and sisters and none of them could do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so it meant I was thinking if, if I was a match, I would donate a kidney if it came to that and wondering if, if I were a match and then mm. we'd go to the kids if I weren't. So I was thinking about those kinds of things and preparing mentally and then even financially preparing for this big storm that might be coming because of what type 2 diabetes might do to him. So yeah, when we discovered we had a lot more power over this disease than we thought, it was wonderful. I mean, our our moods lifted, our future looked brighter, our whole lives and interactions became happier. It, it was very empowering. You know, similar to what you were saying, now we feel like we have a duty to tell other people about this because it might work for them too. And they should at least have the information 
and have the choice. Not everybody will do it, but they should at least know that it's an option and consider it. I think people think that you get diabetes and you're stuck with it and that's just the lot that you get and it's just your rest of your life is like that. So to hear a story like yours where you're saying within three months you're off all the medications, you're feeling amazing, you've lost this weight, so many people will benefit from hearing that because it is diabetes is becoming more and more common and it's happening younger and younger and younger in people's yeah. lives because of the amount of processed, refined, fast junk food that people have access to. So to hear that something like diabetes that you get and then you live with that increasing levels of ill health for the rest of your life, you know, with amputations and all those kinds of ripple kind of ripple consequences. It's a, it's a really empowering, as you said, story for people who may think that this is just the only path for them, is the injections and the medications and that kind of thing. So thank you so much for sharing, because I think that that message should be out there for more people to hear. You're right, you're right yeah. Corinne. And, you know, part of it, too, is I think a lot of people fall back to, well, it's my genetics. It's in my genes, because mm. that's what I thought, too, right? Mm. Well, more and more research is showing all the time through epigenetics that it's more what we do every day. Mm. I mean, yes, genes do play a role, don't get me wrong, Mm. and the science clearly shows that. Mm. But I think it's more what we're doing every day and what the fuels we're feeding our body and what happens to the the majority of our genes um, in determining whether the good genes are going to be turned on or the bad genes are going to be turned on, right? And so... They're finding that more and more, uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, who is one of the one of the gurus in the plant-based world, I mean, he's proven that time and time again through his studies that mm. if you eat the right way, get a little love in your life, a little, a little bit of exercise, a little meditation yoga, that you can, through gene expression, mm. you turn on the good ones and turn off the bad ones. And it's been shown and proven. Don't hang your head on your genes. Say, well, my whole family, because a lot of people can do that, but it's, it's more what you're doing every single day. What were your struggles? When you first started, it would have been such a huge shift from White Castle, fast food takeaway, <laughs> to bean burritos and oatmeal. What were the things that were the hardest for you? So when, we, when Kim and I did this, it was amazing to me because I was used to, Corinne, waking up and my sugar levels after fasting all night and sleeping, I'd wake up and my sugar levels would be between 160 and 180, which you're, you're supposed to be below 100. So here I'm getting up after hours and hours of sleeping and fasting. My sugars are out of control. And then I'd come home from work and poke my, my finger and check my glucose levels. And now I'm in 240, 260. So I'm sitting, you know, dealing with this and just constantly adjusting my insulin and adding more medications. So we said, well, let's try this. And within a few days, I'm talking two to three days, I started to see my sugars start to plummet. I mean, drop drastically up to where I would wake up, you know, they'd be now in the low hundreds, you know, 120, 110. And then next thing you know, now they're in the 90s and 80s. And I'm sitting going cold. And I'm talking within days, I start to see these dramatic improvements. By simply, you know, Dr. Neil Barnard, I mean, what I learned from his book was three things. You eat plant-based, so no animal products. You eat, you make it low fat. Keep all, you know, fat is not the best type of food for our body. I mean, yes, you need some, don't get me wrong, but we want some good fats in the way of nuts, seeds, avocados. And then if you're diabetic, low glycine. Those are the three rules I learned out of Dr. Barnard's program for reversing diabetes, that book. And that's the way I live today, to this day. Those are still the same rules. That's what helped me cure and, and get to some good results quickly. But it was amazing to see these glucose levels dropping. I was feeling better. I'm losing between five to seven pounds a week. My sugar levels are dropping. I'm feeling great. I'm getting up just more energy and just more energetic about everything, about life in general, about all you know, the fact that I'm seeing all this, all this good stuff that the Forks Over Knives movie was talking about. And I read in Dr. Neil Barnard's book. And I'm just feeling so much better, so much, like I said, that we start weaning down the Medicaid, you know, get off the injections. Then the next thing you know, we're cutting pills in half, right? And we're still taking the medication. Sugar levels keep dropping. And the next thing you know, in a few months, I'm off all the medications. But uh, uh, it was it was an amazing experience. And really the aha moment for, for us was 
looking at those those sugar levels dropping mm. and then going to your doctor because as a diabetic you're going to the doctor every three months getting your levels checked yeah and it was amazing to see that in three weeks and it was actually just a little more than three weeks 26 days my cholesterol had dropped 60 points my triglycerides dropped 80 points my a1c went from a 10 and a half down to eight just a little 8.1 so about two and a half points and in my decade of taking all these pills, trying different uh, tactics, exercising more, counting carbs, counting calories, I had never seen anything like I saw by simply adopting a whole food, plant-based diet. So it was so invigorating to me that, you know, as we started this and we kept seeing results for a while. And so I just stayed on this path. And next thing you know, here in five and a half years later, almost six years, and I will never, ever, I know they say never say never. I'm saying never because <laughs> I'm never going to go back to, to doing it, to eating that way again, because I feel so damn good today. And I'm the oldest I've ever been, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And, and it really has to do with the power of plants and um, my beautiful wife here also making a bunch of good stuff for us. Yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing night. Yeah, so there was never any... Like the the angel mark and the bad mark. There was no guy going, maybe just today, what's one burger going to do? You know, there wasn't any of that. Yeah. You know, what's what's amazing is as we were transitioning to this new lifestyle, of course, we, we saw folks overnight, but then we also saw other documentaries. Mm -hmm. uh, right? You end up watching these other documentaries that are out there, Cowspiracy and Earthlings and all of a sudden, uh, Karim, these blinders come off, right? Mm -hmm. You're sitting here going, oh, my God. I can't believe that not only was I dramatically, you know, harming my own body and my own mm -hmm. health, but look at what I'm doing and contributing in the way of harming animals and harming our planet. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's almost like this, this switch went on saying, you know what? I'm not going to contribute to that anymore. Not only am I, you know, improving my health dramatically, but now I'm not harming these animals and we're helping our planet for future generations to come. And I know when Kim taught you would vegetarian you mentioned in college and mm -hmm. that was for ethical reasons, right? Mm -hmm. For the animals. And, and unfortunately then she met me. I mean I guess I should say fortunately, <laughs> but then she met me and I was and I'm I was a big carnivore, right? Yeah, so yeah. she kind of jumped back on that wagon with me. Uh, although never as much. You know? mm -hmm. But I just uh, I think now, now when we, when I go drive by a McDonald's or a Burger King and you smell the grilling and all that, I smell death. I, I, it doesn't sound, it doesn't smell pleasant to me. I don't like the way that smells. I remember used to liking that, mm. uh, but I don't anymore. I think of hurting animals and I think of hurting our planet. Whenever I smell those smells, so they're not pleasant smells anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I try to tell people, now that we have learned so much, you can't unlearn what we have learned mm. in this five and a half, six year journey. And when you look at what happens to your body, then pretty much within an hour or two of you putting these foods into your body, it's amazing what, how your body counteracts with all of these different chemicals and hormones and everything inside the body to produce all these all these harmful toxins and problems within our body. So I, I, I never want to do anything that's going to harm that. I want to be around for my grandkids and God willing, my great grandkids. And I want to be able to be out there throwing football, kicking the soccer ball around, etc. So that's, that's the goal. That's the plan. Well, it seems like you're well on your way to achieving that goal. So congratulations. The first results were the sugar decrease. How did that feel yeah. for you both? Getting, seeing those results, was it day one or was it Three days. You know, I took some notes, uh, but it was it didn't take long. I think day one I saw, you know, at least at that time I saw a drop. But by day two and three, you really started to see significant drops in my glucose levels. Like, for example, when I would get up uh, in the mornings and even when I would come home from work because I was eating now a plant based, low fat lifestyle. My sugars, I mean, it just started to clear out a lot quicker than I thought. And, and you know what was pretty cool was in those first two months, I did not uh, work out. I did not exercise because I didn't want it. I didn't want to sit in here and wondering, was it because of the exercise or was it the food? Yeah. So I pretty much had been in this rut of not working out. So I continued to just stay on that path and not just to see if it was what the foods would do. And it was amazing. Now, after uh, the second month, 
my sugars had kind of stabilized. And I did inject a little bit of exercise in the routine and, and saw, it, saw it just improve a little bit more. But the majority of the results, the majority of the improvements, the biggest drops in glucose and cholesterol and all that came by fixing the food. Not, you know, the exercise is great, and we certainly encourage everyone to try and get some in there when you can, mm-hmm. as much as you not as much as you can, but I, I exercise about three hours a week on average. So three hours out of whole week, that's not a lot of time to invest to just keep your body moving and, and uh, staying in good health. In those first few weeks, were you working with a doctor while you were reducing the medication? Did you have a, a medical team managing you as you reduced the insulin and your pills, or were you just doing that alone? Yeah, so we we absolutely encourage everybody, if you're going to, let's say you're very you're sick and you're taking all these medications, you absolutely should let your doctor know that you're planning on implementing this. And I was working with my doctor. I was seeing him and calling the office frequently mm. uh, as I was seeing the levels dropping. Mm. And it was, you know, what it wasn't necessarily well, okay, well, drop the insulin to this level, then drop it, then hey, let's stop the insulin, let's just stay on the pills. Hey, let's start cutting the pills in half. And that's kind of how we did it. Uh, but we certainly don't, you need to work with your medical provider. Mm-hmm. Um, don't, don't do it alone because it can be, I mean, we, we tell people, look, if, if you adopt this lifestyle and you're on all kinds of medications, you might not feel very well within a few days to a week. You might feel like crap. You might feel like you're getting sick or getting worse. And in reality, it could just be that your medications are too strong. You need to ratchet those back. And that's why it is important for you to work with your medical, uh, your health care provider and let them know what you're doing because the, the body can start to improve quickly. Mm. And if it does, you might need to ratchet back those medications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. I think that's a really wise message. I think that's wise. I think people might hear your story. and I didn't want them to hear it and think, I'm just going to do it myself and cut back everything. You know, I really wanted to hear from you that, you know, working with a practitioner um, as you're doing that, is is the safe? It, it's the safest way to decrease your medications and end up medication free, like you have. So you talked about your exercise and your things. I just want you to describe, maybe just do a compare and contrast. So a day in, you know, like your life before all of this and your life now, and the main differences for you. So before. You know, I, we work I work a lot of hours at, at my place of employment, and I still do today. But I remember eating lunch, lunchtime, we'd have a meal, and I'd feel somewhat lethargic and tired after that meal, almost sleepy, like I was. I wanted to go to bed, right? Because I just went and I had this big burger and this pound of fries, and of course, I had a diet coke because a diet Pepsi because I wanted to be healthy. <laughs> you know, I would just feel these crashes after I would eat. So I, you know, I was tired very often. You know, come home and yeah, you might do a few things around the house and then you, you know, you get ready for bed and you do it all again tomorrow. Try to make some time for the kids, but many times again, you're tired. You don't really feel like doing as much. And today, today is quite the opposite. I mean, uh, just a lot more energy. Uh, I don't sleep as much. I, I get typically around seven hours of sleep, which I think is that seems to be in work okay for me. But the energy level, with, now that I have my full time job at, uh, at the, my place of employment, but I'm, I'm also helping out with Chickpea and Bean. We're frequently doing uh, little seminars. We have monthly meetings, Kim and I, with Chickpea and Bean, where we help people share this message with people. Kim is constantly working on our newsletters and all the social media events. It's amazing because we're full of energy, a lot more energy today than I did, you know, five and a half years ago. The future is brighter. Now we look forward to to our future with grandkids, great grandkids. We what's so liberating too, Corinne, is before this, I would always anytime we'd go away for the weekend or go on vacation, it's, let's pack all your pills, make sure your insulin stays cold. You got all this other piece of the puzzle that needs to go with mm. your, your your poor health all the pills, all the insulin packet, make sure it stays cold and make sure you got enough pills for all the days you're going to be gone. And, and it's just uh, the, the, the medications were running my life, uh, the checking your sugars, all of this was running my life to a, to a large extent. And now I have none of that. I haven't had it for five and a half years. I can't even imagine ever going back to that. So that's what keeps us on this path that I feel so good. Why would I ever want to go back? Why would I ever want to put something in my body that led me there? 
because I'm sure I'm sure if I went in and started doing the fast food stuff again, I'm, I'm quite positive that I would get sick all over. Mm. So uh, at least I, I believe that. I, you know, you're eating poorly, your body's going to react. And right? I, we've been talking about type two diabetes a lot, but you know, then as we learned more and read more, saw more documentaries, we discovered that. By eating this way, we're cutting our chances of heart disease and cancer and Alzheimer's and a lot of other ailments. So that makes us feel good about the future, too. We have high hopes to live long, healthy, prosperous lives. That's what we're shooting for. And so, what's really cool, too, is talk about the kids. Yeah. Um, at first, our kids weren't on board. They were supportive, but they still wanted to eat the way they were used to. Our daughter was away at college, and our son was in high school, teenager living at home. Um, and gradually, you know, he would, I would make some vegan meal and he, he would say, oh, you know what, I'll try that. And as they started to enjoy it more and more, they um, pretty much are on board all the way now. Our daughter is vegan. She does no oil on top of that. She discovered that cleared up her acne, ate no meat. She was vegetarian. Then she discovered when she cut out dairy products, her complexion got better. And then when she cut out oils, her face completely cleared up. So she eats the way we do now. And our son is almost there. He, he might have a little dairy once in a while if he's out with friends or if it's, you know, something baked into another food. That makes me feel great as a mother because I know that 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 is going to improve their lives too, and that they'll be able to give that information and that influence to to their children. So it's very gratifying. Nice. Yeah, and Mark, my son had uh, some intestinal issues, right? Yeah, and he had a lot of digestive issues, and um, eating this way has helped that tremendously. Yeah, so that's good. we think we the dairy. The we think the, the dairy part. was causing him a lot of digestive problems. Mm. So. That's fantastic little bonus. Yeah, right. We weren't expecting all that yeah. on top of any no, of the It's really diabetes. cool. And my son, he's lost weight. I mean, my daughter, the complexion, the, the intestinal issues with my son. And so we feel very good that we have armed our kids with, you know, uh, this information as well. And yeah. they've seen they've seen it improvement firsthand. I mean, they, they, they can't argue with it either. They love it. Uh, you know, my son's a senior at the University of Michigan, so, you know, he goes to all these events and there's just all kinds of animal products everywhere, but he still does a great job of, uh, of trying to just avoid all that stuff and, and he stays on track. So it's pretty cool. That's really cool. Really cool. It's great news because then, they, you know, they influence other people as well and, and their children right. and that kind of thing. Your family history of diabetes, the cycle may be broken with you. Right. Uh, we hope so. We yeah, hope so. That's gone now. Yeah. The Ramirez family is gone. Yes. Yeah. That would be wonderful. be very happy if that's the case. What would be your three biggest tips for people, anyone listening or reading this who wanted to have, have a try at it but wasn't sure if they could do it? Sure. So I would say, uh, what we tag team these about? So I would say probably the first one is uh, be confident. Know that there is a ton of science and evidence and proof and doctors behind you. You're going to hear so many things in the media, the ads. You're going to see all kinds of advertising and marketing saying butter is great and cholesterol is not so bad. And all these, all these, uh, all this noise, noise, I guess I would call it. Yeah. Noise. that And propaganda sort of too. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's 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 amazing to me that, uh, you know, the World Health Organization declared processed meats back in October of 2015 as class one carcinogens. I thought that we'd see a whole bunch of uh, sub shops and that sort of all this processed meat closed down. but It hasn't happened. I mean, it, so, again, be confident. Know that there is a ton of science behind you, a ton of research, and you are on firm ground with all these doctors. And more and more, we're starting to see it. You can even go to the, the Centers for Disease Control's website here in, in, uh, to their website, and they will tell you that chronic illness like heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, obesity, arthritis are among the, are somewhat among the most common, costly, and preventable illnesses we face today. And and I focus on the word preventable, Preventable. right? So it's out there. It may not be headline news, but it is out there and people know it. 
It's, we just need to make sure, and that's again why I thank you for what you're doing to help us get this to the masses, to as many people as we can. Mm. But you are on firm ground, and you're going to get a, a lot of family members, oh, what are you doing? What? You are on firm ground, and just know that, I guess. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great, great tip. Um, I think it's important to prepare also to do some research, find recipes you like. If you're going out to eat and you're looking for vegan options, look on the internet ahead of time at the menus, kind of get an idea of what you might be able to order, even call ahead and ask. Uh, if you're going to some social events, uh, eat before you go and also bring a dish that you can share, something that you'll like and you think other people might like too. To have the right food in the house so that you don't get off track when you're hungry and reach for something that you shouldn't or run to a drive through that you shouldn't. So be prepared, I think, is, yeah. is a good tip. Great. And then so another... Set I mean, yourself up for success. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we, many times, if we know we're going to a social event, we'll fill up before we go and, mm. and or offer to bring a dish and these kinds of things to, to make sure that we have something to eat there and that we're not, because, you know, if you're not prepared, you're sitting there starving, you're going to eat whatever's there, right? So if you can prepare ahead of time, I think that is a, a big component of being successful. We were at an event once that um, where you get an individual plate served to your table, and we and it was surf and turf that we had coming. So <laughs> we, had, we asked one of the servers if there was a vegan option, and there was. They didn't tell anybody, but we found out all we had to do was ask, and they brought us a, a really good meal. So yeah. speak up and ask, too. And then also, too, Karen, is uh, don't beat yourself up. Be kind to yourself. If you happen to, you know, we talk to so many people who start these lifestyles, and they're like, oh, you know, last night I had some pizza, and I it had sausage or pepper or whatever. Okay, it happened, right? Don't sit there and kick yourself and beat yourself and be so negative. Just try to, you know what they say, try to get back up and try to keep moving. But try not to just stay on that path either, right? I mean, okay, hey, it happened. Don't beat yourself up. Let's just get up and let's just start, I mean, dust yourself off and keep moving forward and hopefully get back on that train, if you will, as quickly as you can. But so many people want to, oh, you know, they'll, they'll get off and they're like, oh, they stay on that course and next thing you know, they're right back where they were before. Mm -hmm. So don't beat yourself up. Be kind to yourself. Just realize it happens and just try to get on. I think they, they say it takes a smoker on average 11 times to quit. Uh, also, never underestimate the body's ability to heal itself. Our body is always looking to heal itself. You know, think back to when any one of us got a cut on our hand, on our foot, on our leg. What does our body do? It starts right away to, you know, sometimes it'll swell up if it's, a, if it's an ankle or a knee. But your body starts trying to heal itself right away. That's, that's what it's designed to do. And so if we feed it with the right foods, it'll hopefully, it, it'll cause less inflammation. It, it doesn't produce all these negative uh, toxins in our body. Uh, it doesn't make our, you know, constrict our endothelial lining of our arteries and veins. I mean, there's so many positive things with eating healthy foods as opposed to eating the high inflammatory, high cholesterol, high saturated fat foods that really you find in the animal world. Don't underestimate your body's ability to heal itself. We just need to feed it the right foods. That is such an important message. And I think that so many people need to understand that our bodies are always trying to heal and we just keep barraging them with the next toxic bit of food in our mouths and we're thinking why am i always so tired and you're like, your body has no idea what to do with that burger you just ate <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, yeah exactly right. yeah so no it's so it's such a really great tip to send is that doing this is giving your body what it needs to prioritize healing Right, yeah. Yeah, and I know you, you mentioned three things, and I'm sorry, I might throw in, I think we've talked about four or five, yeah. but I'm going to have one more. <laughs> but one of the biggest thing we hear, um, Corinne, is where do you get your protein? Where do you get your protein? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you've heard it too, right? And, and I tell people, look, gorillas, gorillas share the same DNA as a human being to 98.3%. They're almost human, genetically speaking. Guess what? They don't eat meat and they don't drink milk except when they're young. Take it one step further. Elephants, rhinoceros, bulls, giraffes, stallions. Guess what? 
they don't eat meat and they don't drink milk except when they're young. Those are some of the largest land animals on this planet. Yeah? Where do they get their protein? You get it from plants. The same place we will get ours much easier on our kidneys and on our body, much uh, healthier for you, and our bodies will thrive. And that's, that's the only thing that I, when I look at my wife, myself, my kids, and many other people who come to our meetings who, who wrap their arms around this idea that food can be your medicine and can really dramatically improve your health. We see it all the time when people really embrace this lifestyle. And, uh, and it may not cure everything, but it, you're going to be way better off eating this way than you will eating a whole lot of animal protein and fat. Well, you asked for three, we gave you six. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank No, 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 please don't apologize. I love it. They were all really good. So no, that's great. What's your favorite go-to snack or simple breakfast? Because people often think, oh, it's too confusing in the morning. You know, I'm just going to eat breakfast McMuffin on the way or whatever. And the snacking, I'm just going to grab a chocolate bar from the vending machine. What's your what's your go to? Uh, I love to have toast and tea or coffee in the morning with almond butter and a little bit of raspberry jam. That's my favorite thing, and probably a banana to go with it. Um, that's what I love to have. And in the end, my staple for breakfast is going to be oatmeal. It's so versatile, uh, old fashioned oatmeal. Yeah. You can just heat up some water real quick, mm-hmm. and like I've got an electric water heater here. Heat it up in just a couple of minutes. And while that water's heating up, I'm chopping up a banana, throwing some blueberries, maybe a few walnuts or you know, flax seeds, some cinnamon in there, blueberries. It's any combination you can think of. And literally in about four minutes, you've got a fantastic meal. i got a bowl that's heaping over with oatmeal and all these fruits and nuts and cinnamon. And it's, it's a fantastic meal. Very easy. Four or five minutes and, and you'll have fantastic breakfast. And it's so much better for you than uh, those fast food sandwiches, uh, mm. drive through sandwiches and sausage and bacon. Just so much better for you. Oh, yeah. Sounds delicious. What about snacks? So I typically, you know, fruits, uh, oranges, uh, vegetables, you know, celery sticks, maybe dip in a little bit of hummus, uh, carrot sticks with hummus. Um, but it's typically a fruit or veggie that, that I am eating. And that's pretty much uh, my main snack. My snacks, I love leftovers. When I make something special, I usually double the recipe, so I'm sure to have leftovers. I even have that for breakfast sometimes, like soups or stews or um, macro bowls or, you know, I just make a lot. That's that's another tip. <laughs> uh, when you make something, double it so you have leftovers. But if we don't have leftovers, I, I like hummus, and bagels, and fruit. Fruit's always good. Thank you. They're all good tips. I I haven't had breakfast, and now listening to that, I'm thinking, oh, oh do I hungry. want toast with almond butter and jam with a banana, or do I want oatmeal and a huge bowl? <laughs> ah, decisions. <laughs> so, back on to you and your chickpea and bean. I'd love to hear all about what you're up to, where we can follow you, where we can find you, all those kinds of things. Well, you can visit our website, chickpeaandbean.com. Follow us on Facebook. Chickpea and Bean, uh, Twitter, Instagram, it's all under Chickpea and Bean. Yeah. You can email us through our website if you like. Yeah. And we're doing a lot of events in our area. So if you happen to live in our area, check it out. We have some fun stuff coming up. We do farm to fork events and we, we're doing a 21 day vegan kickstart soon. And we're going to keep doing those periodically. We um, do that with PCR, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine through their 21-day Kickstart program. Uh, Kim has off of our website, there's a newsletter. It comes out once, sometimes twice a month. It's free, and basically that gives you a list of everything that's going on, as well as different tips and uh, things that we become, uh, you know, that are out, that are new. Uh, but, yeah, that's how you find us, chickpeanbean.com. Uh, we, we love everything that you're doing, Corinne. If there's any way we can help support your efforts in Australia, please let us know. Uh, love your story and uh, you know there's a ton of resources on our website and it, pretty much it's all free there so please uh, for you and your listeners and your following uh, you're more than welcome to go and, and uh, listen to all the all the great stuff and information we have on our website thank you thank you so much i just wanted to before we finish on that with your events like what could somebody who wanted to learn more about your events know about what to expect when I walk in the door. So, so our mission statement is to 
share the power and benefits of a whole food plant-based lifestyle. So pretty much the meetings that we have here in Clinton Township, Michigan, where we live, uh, the local meetings we have at our library, they're always free and they're open to anyone who wants to come and listen. We bring in doctors, we bring in uh, chefs, we bring in uh, medical professionals, and they try to share all of all that they know and all the latest and greatest uh, with respect to uh, plant-based eating. You know, we're, we're not judgmental. It, it's for people who have been eating this way for a while and want new ideas or want some support. It's also for people who are just curious and haven't tried it yet. Uh, everybody's welcome. So we have a very positive, friendly atmosphere, and uh, it's upbeat and fun. So a yeah. lot of good, friendly people there to yeah. meet. We do potlucks, I mean, all kinds of things. But, yeah, it is open to any and everybody looking to learn. We don't judge people. And, you know, we try to help them wherever they're at. And if we can help take them to that next level, and that's what we try to do. I thought about a, a final final question. So I hope you have one time for one more question. Do you sure, have time? sure. Oh, thank you. I just thought it would be a great question to ask. Since you've been on this journey and you've been spreading your message, what's been your best moment of spreading your message like how it's affected or impacted upon someone that you have touched with your message i think for me and and i'll let kim uh, kind of answer hers but for me it's multiple people but there is no greater joy than someone coming up to you and telling thank you for saving my life not necessarily at that moment but basically in the same position i was in where my health was deteriorating and i was just headed down this slippery slope to poor health and a, a lot of health issues and problems. There's nothing more energizing than having someone come and say, hey, thank you for, for helping. Thank you for taking the time to show, bring this, put this together and, and help me improve my health. That, that, that's the greatest joy to me that we that I have received since we began doing chickpea bean almost two years ago. Yeah, same for me. We, um, people come up and, and sometimes we don't even, we haven't met them before. They say, oh, I, I follow your website or I follow you on Facebook or I saw you on TV. They say you you inspired me, and I changed it and changed the way I was eating. And look at my results. Yeah. And it's um, it makes me feel very grateful that we found this path and that we can share it with others. It motivates us to keep going. So there was this the uh, this one uh, young lady who saw us on a TV interview March of 2016, and uh, she saw us on TV. She had just been, uh, she was been diabetic. Her doctor's like, hey, you know, we got it. We, we have to start giving you these medications now. We, we can't wait anymore. So she's like, hold on. I saw these, this couple on TV and I want to go and see what this meeting's about. So she comes to our meeting. The next day after our meeting, uh, she goes plant-based. And in five months, she loses 70 pounds. She's no longer diabetic. Her doctor's like, what the heck happened here, right? And we had no idea, Karina, that, that this was going on. So we, she would just come to the meetings, kind of sit in the back, and didn't even know this was all happening. But then she came up when, after five months. She says, hey, you know, I just need to tell you this. I've been doing this for five months, and here's my story. And just We were so elated to have her tell us that. But just amazing stuff. We see people that are getting off many medications, losing weight, regaining their health. Many people... You know, will tell us, hey, I'm I'm upset that my doctor, my you know, I've had two stents, and my doctor never told me, hey, here's an option. You might want to try eating plant based. Was never given to them as an option. So they're they're very happy they found us, but they're also a little upset at the medical establishment, who's not really, at least for these individuals, was not pointing them to say, hey, try this. You know, you find that primarily doctors, they're great, God bless them, but when you talk to kids coming out of medical school, they really learn two things. One is how to treat acute injury, you know, broken arms, broken legs. And the other is how to treat symptoms. They're not trained to dig into what is the root cause? Why do you have type 2 diabetes? Why is your cholesterol high? Why do you have high blood pressure? They sit here and say, well, you have diabetes. I have 20 different pills we can try. Like, let's try these. You know, They may have a certain regimen they follow, but... Mm. Instead of, you know, the old analogy, and I heard this from Dr. Dean Ornish, where he said, you know, the sink is overflowing with water, and we're down here on the floor mopping it up with towels and mops, and, <laughs> but, but nobody's up on top trying to turn the faucet off, and mm. so we're, we're not getting to the root cause. That's our biggest thing, I think, is 
it's not like we're making a ton of money at this, but yet yeah. we still do it and we love it. And uh, we do it because we, we see the benefits. We see the lives that we're changing just as we have changed our lives. And mm. so it's just a great gift that we're able to do this and see so many people improve their health. It makes it all worthwhile. Every yeah. little right. comment, every little thing is so nice that you're spreading that message and you're helping those people. And that's what you're doing too. So again, thank, thank you, you thank for you all you're doing. doing. Oh, Anything we can do to help support your efforts, please know from here in Michigan in the USA, we'll do everything we can to help support <laughs> you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking your time. I know that you, as you said, you're working a lot and you're working a lot on Jigbean Bean. You've got lots on your plate and you're so busy with your events and those things. So I really, really appreciate you taking this time for this interview today. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, all the way from Australia. Wow, thank you. Thank you. It's we our pleasure. It. And uh, we're honored that, uh, that you asked us to do this. Now, I don't know about you, but this interview gave me goosebumps. Thank you so much, Mark and Kim, for taking the time to share your incredible story with us. You can find Mark and Kim at www.chickpeanbean.com. If you'd like to learn more about what they do and how to work with them in the future, you can also find them at Facebook handle Chickpea and Bean. That's C-H-I-C-K-P-E-A-A-N-D-B-E-A-N. Thanks for listening. Next week, we have Drs. Alphonse and Helene Rocks on the podcast to tell us about their experience with a low-fat plant-based whole food diet and their thoughts on how this way of eating can help to drastically improve people's health and lives for the better. See you next week.